Greetings traders and welcome back to another survival guide. Chris here bringing you some more information. Today we're going to be talking about drawdown. This is an important subject to cover because one of the rules if you plan on getting an earn to trade funded trading account is controlling your maximum drawdown. So we're going to talk about what drawdown is, how it pertains to trading, and why it's so incredibly important to be able to control whether you're trading with a funded account or not. But before we go any further, can you do me a favor? Click that like and subscribe button down below before we keep moving because it allows me to keep coming out with these videos for you guys. Now, let's dive on into that material and learn about Drawdown. Many new traders fail because they can't withstand the pressure associated with market instabilities leading to drawdowns that are entirely too large. This usually relies in a lack of self-control issue or not an adequate amount of risk management being put in place. To become a successful trader, one of the first things we have to do is understand how we're going to control our drawdown. A drawdown in trading refers to the degree to which your trading account or a particular investment drops from its peak at the point of time that we had it, assuming we bought, before recovering. So basically, it is the farthest distance against our position that the price is willing to travel while we are holding it. The drawdown is calculated as a percentage between the peak and the following trough. However, in the case of a traded account value, the drawdown can also be recorded as a dollar sum. For example, if we have a $1,000 trading account and our account drops because of a trade to $900 and then the move goes back above $1,000, then the drawdown achieved was 10% or the $100 because that's how much it dropped during our engagement. Engagement with the trade. If the instrument's price or the value of our account drops below the peak but then fails to get back, then we can expect a new lower trough. Troughs only become recognizable after there is a new peak. That is the reason why drawdowns are recorded right after the price gets back to the peak and not before. Otherwise, if there is a lower trough, then the drawdown itself has just simply increased. Drawdowns are an inevitable part of financial markets and more common than you might think. According to some estimations, the S&P 500 has a 5% to 10% drawdown 12.8% of the time. In addition, over an almost 200-year period of market history, investors had been in a drawdown 74% of the time. More than 40% of the drawdowns exceeded 20%. If the market has so many drawdowns, then it is normal for our trading account and the assets in our portfolio to also have them as well. We can't simply run away or for hide forever against a drawdown. So it isn't necessarily a bad thing to have a drawdown, but they do need to be managed properly. This is where adequate risk management strategies allow us to survive all of the periods of drawdowns and continue moving forward with our profits. Drawdowns in trading are important because they help us as traders measure the historical risk of instruments or evaluate their overall performance. For example, the drawdown of an ETF, futures contract, or a stock can indicate how risky and volatile the instrument has been in the past. That way, traders can better identify whether the particular instrument fits their risk tolerance and investment goals. In the context of trading, drawdown can also be described as downside volatility. The bigger the drawdown, the the more volatility the particular instrument has been through and will likely continue to go through. When analyzing drawdown in the context of an instrument's price or an account's value, it is important to note that the time it takes to recover from the drop is another key characteristic to pay attention to. The quicker the instrument regains its price, the better it is for the trader. Common sense, right? Understandably, this is also the case with our trading accounts. The quicker we recover, usually the happier we are. For example, if a particular instrument experiences a notable 10% drawdown and gets back to its peak within just a few seconds or minutes, then most likely the reason is a flash crash, which shouldn't convert concern us as traders too much. 
Sometimes in the longer term, a drawdown can take anywhere from days to months in terms of the overall trend, but that doesn't mean that we can't profit in the short term in either direction. Drawdown is often referred to as an unrealized loss. As we mentioned, the drop is temporary in the case of a drawdown by its nature, and it's registered once price hits its second peak, which means technically we never fully accept a drawdown as the word describes it. To understand how a drawdown works, we should analyze both contexts that it's applied in. If we start with drawdown as a measure of an asset's financial risk, well, in this context, the drawdown is basically the negative half of the standard deviation in relation to a particular instrument's price. If we were to say that Apple were trading at $300 and dropped $15 to 285, then gets back to $300 and one cent, then the drawdown in this case would be 5%. In the context of a trader's trading account, the drawdown is calculated as a temporary drop in the value of an account that is regained afterwards. For example, if we have $50,000 in our account and we lose $5,000, then the portfolio goes ahead and regains its value and surpasses that $50,000 mark, then we had a 10% drawdown but have since recovered. Now, after we are familiar with how the drawdown works, it's essential to understand how to use it to evaluate investment opportunities in general. How big of a risk is a drawdown for investors is something that we need to analyze and it usually depends on scale. Sometimes the market does experience 20% drawdowns where it has to regain 25% increases just to get back to the previous trading levels. A 50% drawdown translates to a 100% increase in order to the market recover. And this is something that has actually happened. It isn't impossible. The last time we witnessed such a scenario unfold was during the financial crisis of 2008. But with COVID, we're experiencing similar things in various markets. In this graph, we can see another example of when the S&P had a substantial drawdown taking place between June of 2008 and March of 2012. With a length of three years and nine months, the drawdown hit its lowest point of negative 52%, showing that it is possible for the market to fall over 50%. A general rule of thumb is for investors to avoid instruments that have average drawdowns higher than 20 to 25%. Here we have a weekly chart of the E-mini S&P 500 where we have a couple consecutive drawdowns marked off in these rectangular boxes. So what we have is the first drawdown starts from the peak of A and then hits a trough around B, then proceeds to surpass the previous peak, which was obviously around A, as we reach the point of C. So in this case, with the second drawdown, we have an initial peak of X, then we hit a trough of Y, and then we work to pass the peak of X with Z over here on the right. As we can see, the first round is completed in a period of two months, while the second lasts three and a half months. When trading, drawdowns can take anywhere from a couple minutes to several months or years to recover, depending on the scale of the drawdown on the time frame that we're analyzing. Most trading experts usually suggest that we should mitigate the effect of our drawdown exposure by maintaining some form of a well-diversified portfolio. This includes a wide range of instruments like stocks, bonds, commodities, cash, precious metals, as just a general idea. When constructing it, we usually want to look at the historical volatility of the potential assets that we're interested in investing in and potentially avoid things that have an unnecessarily higher degree of volatility and drawdown than we would prefer. With this data from Bloomberg, S&P, MSCI, and SEI and the Bloomberg indexes, it shows how simple diversification can help better navigate those drawdown periods. The employed naive diversification strategy is equal weighted. If we wanted to better protect ourselves and our investments from drawdowns, it's also essential to analyze the situation in perspective. Although no one knows how long a drawdown is going to take necessarily, we can at least plan our goals and adjust the maximum possible drawdown based on our particular investment horizon. For example, say if we were just starting our career or have at least 10 to 15 years till we get to retirement. In this case, a drawdown of 20% might be viable for us because in that time length, our portfolio will most likely be able to recover from those potential negative impacts. But on the other hand, when we are really close to retirement, we'd probably more consider to look at portfolios that have as low of a drawdown as possible to ensure that our capital is protected when we need it most. 
Now that we know what drawdown is, we can talk about maximum drawdown, which is the maximum range or move between a peak and a trough of a portfolio. It is measured as a percentage or as a dollar amount. Investors take maximum drawdown, also referred to as MDD, as an essential metric to evaluate downside risk associated with a particular investment over a period of time. They use it as a standalone metric or incorporate it into a more complex concept like the return over the MDD. The maximum drawdown takes into account only the magnitude of the largest drawdown. It doesn't consider the frequency or the big losses or how long it's taking for them to get back to its peak afterwards. The concept of the MDD is intended to provide us as investors with a clearer picture of a particular investment opportunity's capital preservation potential. For example, if the trader compares two stock screening strategies with equal performance and volatility, usually that trader is going to choose the one with the lower drawdown. A low maximum drawdown is preferred because it means the potential losses of a particular investment are lower. On the other hand, a maximum drawdown of 100% basically means investing in that specific instrument is probably pointless. When analyzing a particular investment opportunity, it is essential to always examine the MDD in context of a benchmark. For example, let's say we were considering investing in a fund that had a 30% maximum drawdown for the period of 2000 to 2010. At first sight, this might seem like an extremely risky investment. But then let's say we took a look at the S&P 500 for the same period, and we saw that the MDD was over 50%. So this puts things in perspective and shows us that the fund has massively outperformed the index in terms of MDD. What we first considered as a risky investment proved to be a safer bet than the global benchmark for that particular period. This won't always be the case, and we should never invest in an instrument based solely on the maximum drawdown. There are numerous factors in play, but this is just one of them that we do need to be aware of. What this comes to show is that we can always analyze drawdown in comparison with a benchmark and gain more information from it. For example, if we're trading stocks, we can use the S&P 500, the Dow Jones Industrial Average, or any other big name industry to give us a solid benchmark. Besides this, to get actionable insights, we could always complement our analysis by comparing the maximum drawdown in relation to the maximum drawdown duration. In fact, it is worth noting that the duration of a drawdown is often more painful for the trader than its particular magnitude. A 20% drawdown lasting a few months is bearable, but when it lasts years, it can really put our nerves to the test. Now let's talk about how the drawdown applies to the earn to trade funded trading accounts. With the earn to trade accounts, there is something called a trailing drawdown. This is a maximum amount of money that the account is allowed to fall backwards, just like we talked about with the maximum drawdown, but it follows the price up into a point. It doesn't follow forever. With the 50k gauntlet mini account, for example, it has a trailing drawdown to begin with of $2,000. This $2,000 trailing drawdown simply means that if your account is starting at $50,000, it can't fall below $48,000. If it does, well, unfortunately, that is not good for you. But if it does continue to rise and you're not going backwards, so say you rise your account to, say, $52,000. Well, your trailing drawdown is still going to be that $2,000 difference, which means at that point, your account is not allowed to fall below $50,000. But this is where it gets pretty cool. If your account rises to, say, $57,000, the trailing drawdown is still that 2000 initial dollars, but it got pegged. It got stuck at $50,000. It will never pass the point of the initial account balance. So everything beyond that 2000, everything beyond that $52,000 mark is excess space for you. That means that your account could be at $60,000, could fall all the way down to $51,000. And even though that's more than $2,000, you're still fine. So the key takeaway here is make sure you're doing profitable things and all will be well. But until next time, folks, I look forward to seeing you in it. So please click that like and subscribe button down below so I can keep coming out with videos for you guys. Happy trading, everybody.